looks like we've got another mystery on our hands. Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's KHG back with some more Warhammer. Kind of. I don't know how this happened, but it's probably the same for our relationship. I just popped up on your recommended somehow. Today, this guy popped up on my recommended. Kamazar Gamza. I can't pronounce names that aren't like of American spelling. I hope you don't unsubscribe from me for that, but words in American uh, typically have a certain kind of way that they said. Like his name would be Commissioner. I think that's the same for like the UK. But Gazma, that's something different. Anyway, anyway, he has an interesting thing that he's doing on his channel. Could certain people survive the Warhammer universe? This video is going to be a could Ghost Rider survive the 40k universe, which is interesting to me because remember, I am not fully knowledgeable about the entire 40k universe. So to me, I would compare his power somewhere around chaos or demons or something like that, maybe even reaching as far as maybe even reaching as far as the power of the satan pure energy i don't know but it's an interesting question you know if we want to mix two universes up anyway i try to keep my intro short so let's get to the video all right all right y'all Let's see what the commissioner has to say. Why, hello there, everybody. Welcome to this video. So today we're going to be asking the question, could Ghost Rider from Marvel Comics survive in a Warhammer 40k universe? And to kick this video off, we need to talk about which Ghost Rider we're going to use because there are many versions of Ghost Rider. And to answer that simply, it's going to be Johnny Blaze, which was the original Ghost Rider. Now, some of you may be asking why I am not using Cosmic Ghost Rider, and it's a simple answer. He is way too powerful for Warhammer 40k. If you guys are unfamiliar with Cosmic Ghost Rider, let me summarize him very quickly for you. One, he looks like Ghost Rider who met Mr. Freeze and fused together. <laughs> but also at the same time, it is Frank Castle, who is the Punisher, who eventually becomes the Ghost Rider, and... He is further empowered by Galactus to be one of his heralds. Yeah, that's incredibly powerful. Uh-oh, spoiler alert. This cosmic Ghost Rider is so powerful that he eventually one-shots with minimal effort an alternate timeline Thanos. So let that speak for itself. Mm. Johnny Blaze, a.k.a. Ghost Rider, is an American motorcycle stunt performer and entertainer turned spirit of vengeance. He became bound to Zarathos, the spirit of vengeance, after making a deal with a dirty demon named Mephisto to spare the life of his... Okay, Zarathos. Who would he be in the Warhammer universe? Leave your answers down in the uh, comments, please. Durgit father, you damn fool. Now with the power to control Hellfire and to inflict pain on those he deemed evil with his penance stare, Blaze seeks vengeance, riding his hell cycle as the Ghost Rider. You will know it as the Ghost Rider. Super strength? Of course. He can lift well over a thousand tons, including throwing a building at the Hulk. It is also rumored that Zarathos can increase his strength to unlimited proportions, which is admittedly stupid. Ultra durability? Absolutely, Ghost Rider is incredibly durable, able to tank direct blows from the Hulk, and showing no signs of injury. Not to mention, when he has taken severe damage, he regenerates instantly with no negative effects. He is basically immune to physical damage. But wait, there's more! If you call in the next 10 minutes, I'll double your immunity to damage! Hellfire manipulation. Okay, this that was is that was a little too much. Of his abilities. Well, burnt bread for the Ghost Rider. Hellfire is a supernatural flame that burns the soul of a person and can be used to burn their physical body. He can utilize this fire in various ways, including projecting it from his eyes, hands, mouth, or even channel it from his body into his weapons like his shotgun. 
and even create structures such as his motorcycle completely out of hellfire and brimstone. He can also unleash I don't know the what hellfire game this in is. omnidirectional attack. Oh, let me stop. I don't know what game this is, but this is the worst. But this is the worst like animated game that I have ever seen. Like whoever developed this, you need to be ashamed of yourself and do better. Acts that are incredibly powerful. Wait a second. Flaming skulls, spirit of vengeance, appearing out of nowhere, and using fire to enhance their weapons. Doesn't this sound a little familiar to you guys? <laughs> I didn't realize it when Games Workshop said they wanted to be more inclusive, that they meant including your copyrighted material into their stories. <laughs> now included with his... Had a CIC. Commissioner of Cross the Line. Hellfire abilities is his Hellfire Chains. Ghost Rider wields fire chains that are capable of growing in length, cutting through almost anything, and transforming into other weapons. He can also spew and project chains from his mouth or chest at will. Alright, now it's time for the ultimate technique of the Ghost Rider. His eyes contain one of the most powerful abilities. <laughs> okay, maybe not those abilities, but he does have the pen and stare to cause any individual who stares into his eyes to see and feel every bit of physical or emotional pain they have ever inflicted on anyone in their entire lifetime. However, this ability is a little bit weird, and that's because there have been different writers for Ghost Rider, and they have rewritten this ability multiple times. The most consistent form of the Penance Stare is that he is able to inflict upon you the pain that you have inflicted on anybody else. That's the more consistent ability. However, some poorly written lore follows that if you don't regret anything, then the Penance Stare doesn't work on you. I believe this was a failed attempt to nerf the pen and stare because of how powerful it was. Essentially, the more evil you were, the more damage it did to you. However, with this type of writing, most murderers are probably psychopaths and they don't really regret anything that they've done. The only thing that they regret is getting caught. So essentially, most of the guilty people he runs into, like the murderers and rapists, the pen and stare wouldn't even work on them to begin with because they don't regret anything that they've done. So the more consistent view is he's inflicting the pain on you that you've inflicted on other people. That's just the more consistent. I'm going to slap it right here and give my analysis on him. I usually don't um, talk about other YouTubers, especially if I'm doing a reaction on him. But dude, your whole gimmick is um, take popular superheroes and try to match him against uh, Warhammer. You are elaborating too much on the superheroes. You're making this a superhero thing and not a Warhammer thing. You just added Warhammer at the end and just gonna stick him in there and all this kind of stuff. We know who Ghost Rider is. Damn. Consistent method of addressing this power. Now, the two weaknesses that he possesses is one, weapons made specifically in heaven, and the other is removing the possession of Zarathos from Johnny Blaze. How this would happen, I don't know, because Zarathos is basically a god, and you would have to overpower that and force him out of Johnny's body, to which Zarathos can then go and possess somebody else. All right, let's go ahead and take Ghost Rider and throw his ass into the Warhammer 40k universe. And speaking of ass, once he reaches the Warhammer 40k universe, one thing I know for certain is his butt cheeks are going to clench harder than a Hulk clap when the evil and guilt washes over him like an evil bukake. So many guilty, so little time. However, I do not think that Ghost Rider would spend too much time with the Imperium of Man. Why? Because something bigger is going to catch his eye, and that is going to be chaos. I kind of imagine him landing on an Imperial planet. You know, he judges a few people guilty, slaps a couple of people around, but then he might run into a chaos cult group, 
and this is he's going to sense a far greater power which is going to be the warp that they are worshiping and i think he would also be able to sense the entities that are being channeled through these people now in order to get closer to this corruption he's going to have to eventually leave this planet what better way and what a more epic way could there ever be than Ghost Rider forming an Imperial ship out of fire and brimstone or... Okay, you got my attention now. I take back what I said, but still, we know who Ghost Rider is. Taking over one and altering it with his own hellfire. Something like this would be epic. Now your friendly neighborhood Inquisitor is gonna pick up on this real quick. What the hell? <laughs> now, I imagine that our Ghost Rider is going to be heading towards the Eye of Terror. However, he's not going to just take a straight path there. I think he's going to be trying to intercept Chaos ships and Chaos Space Marines, etc. on different planets on the way over to the Eye of Terror. Wherever his original landing would be, this would be an enormous journey to undertake, and I can imagine him running into some crazy Chaos Generals and eventually even Abaddon himself if he destroys enough Chaos ships. Another thing too is I imagine this Inquisitor trailing the Ghost Rider, and whenever he thinks he found his final location, when he shows up to it, all he finds is a destroyed Chaos ship with burnt bodies just floating in space. Something like this would be cool. Not to mention, imagine the ship battles with a Ghost Rider ship where you have these massive Hellfire chains like coming out of the ship, wrapping around a Chaos ship, and almost like trying to squeeze it and slowly rip its hulls in half. Dude, can you imagine how epic that would be, man? That, like, I wish I could turn... Okay, I see a vision, and I like it. Listen to like a flash animation. Something like this would just be so cool to see, man. But anyways, I can imagine that eventually the Ghost Rider is going to be heading towards the Eye of Terror, and he's going to be running into people like Abaddon and stuff, and those are going to be some epic clashes, but I'm... Hey man, there's just no way that Abaddon can take down the Ghost Rider. The Ghost Rider is just way too damn powerful. Okay, so now this is where we're going to reach the end game of all of this. This is where all the questions come out. This is where all the chaos happens, pun intended. So we're going to say that Ghost Rider eventually reaches the Eye of Terror. This is the source of evil that he's been seeking to stop. Now... Once you enter the Eye of Terror, you're not playing by normal rules no more. I don't think any of the greater demons or anything else like that could do anything to the Ghost Rider. He's just way too powerful. However, the Chaos Gods themselves can then pose a real threat to the Ghost Rider because they do possess immense powers. So this is where all the questions and all the crazy things pop out. Number one, it's been hinted. I'm not sure exactly confirmed. A lot of you guys that know a lot maybe about Ghost Rider can tell me about this. But I think it's been hinted that the Ghost Rider could actually destroy your soul with his penance stare if he chooses to do it. Um, most of the time he doesn't, he just punishes you, but I, I've heard that it's been inclined that he can destroy your soul itself. If he does this, the Chaos Gods are going to be 100% pissed off at him and they're going to want him dead, especially if he was destroying some of the Chaos uh, Champions before their souls. Like, let's say he reaches Abaddon. The Chaos Gods have claimed parts of his soul. If he uses a penance stare and destroys that, he took that from the Chaos Gods, and that would piss all four of them off. So something like this would just be a total breakdown. If they assault the Ghost Rider... Okay, I'm actually learning knowledge from him. There are four Chaos Gods. Abaddon. Haven't heard that name before. Learning. In his basic form with Johnny, there's just no way that he can stand up against those Chaos Gods. He's gonna need Zarathos to go full power, and I think the Chaos Gods could easily bring that out of him simply by attacking him, and if they beat the shit out of him to the point where he loses consciousness, which shouldn't be that hard for the Chaos Gods to do, Zarathos then, then pops out, he takes full control, and the power of Ghost Rider just skyrockets. Now, while all this crazy stuff is going on in the warp, you have to keep in mind that this is gonna be creating massive ripples in the warp. You're probably going to see the Imperium of Man, the Eldar, all kinds of psychers across all the different factions just probably suffering mass casualties, especially the Eldar. So, and just imagine them closing the Eye of Terror or it collapses in on itself or any, like the psychic backlash from this fight is going to just wreak havoc across the 41st millennium. 
Now, I don't know if Zarathos would ever be powerful enough to kill, like, let's say, Zinch or Korn. I think he is strong enough to kill the likes of Nurgle or Slanesh. These are the weaker of the four Chaos Gods. However, I'm going to throw in a wild card here, and this is one that I think is the pinnacle part which determines whether Ghost Rider wins or loses. That is the Penance Stare. If it works the way that it was originally intended, I mean, almost technically speaking, he can one-shot the Chaos Gods. Because the amount of pain and suffering that they've caused on, who knows, trillions of people across time. Probably quadrillions, there's just no telling. All that pain and suffering would just essentially get them one-shot by the Penance Stare. However, if it's, you know, kind of like those silly tropes of, oh, if you have too many eyeballs or if you don't regret nothing, if that plays a role in this, then if the Chaos Gods will just slap that out of the way. It won't mean anything to them. But if the Penance Stare does work on them, that essentially will one-shot them. And I know Ghost Rider, especially if it's going to be Zarthos in, in control, he's going to deem them all guilty and he's going to try to destroy those entities outright. So this is kind of like that, that flimsy field. I think most people would lean towards the Penance Stare not working on them because it would just be more anticlimactic and it would just be like you know, stare into my face and just die instantly. And it's like, okay, there goes the Chaos Gods. So if it works, he wins. If it doesn't work, I think he'll take out a couple of the Chaos Gods and then he'll probably either be imprisoned or he'll be destroyed by probably Zinch and Korn joining up together. But regardless, just destroying any of the Chaos Gods, <laughs> the psychers on the material realm, are gonna, they're just going to suffer big time, man. But anyways, that's the end of this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and I'll have more for you later. Oh, all right, y'all. That was a video. Um, I liked it. I liked it. And if you liked it, uh, please let me know in the comments because I'll do some more of these every now and then. But I'm going to stick to the more, I don't want to say professional uh, commentators on 40K. But it's all right. Um, just like I'm looking here with Godzilla survive the 40k universe with Superman survive 40k Dark Vader <laughs> interesting questions like I said if you like um, this kind of stuff I will do reactions on it um, I've already told him I was gonna do a reaction to his video and you know maybe you guys will go check out his channel link in the description anyway you could have been anywhere watching anything but you were here with me so i thank you till next time kg peace we know who ghost rider is but because he does not have a chainsaw or a bolter he means nothing <laughs> You need help.